No, I know, I'm sorry, it has been far, far too long since my last video, especially since we went over the 900 subscriber milestone mark, and I was supposed to make a video for that to celebrate it a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, this is finally that video. I wanna talk about two topics in this video. One that I've wanted to discuss for a while now, which is oppressive and non-inclusive wording in software and technology, and how you can make a very, very small change to your git flow, your gitting, in order to remove these words. And somewhat related, I wanna talk about Hacktoberfest 2020, and how the incredible event has actually changed a little bit this year. So, let's do it. Hi there folks, my name is Ben and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button if you enjoy what I do on this channel. And of course, if you like this video, give that thumbs up icon a little click. Firstly, we have gone over 900 subscribers. Huzzah! <laughs> I have not the foggiest idea why you beautiful people are subbing to this dumb dumb channel, but I am incredibly touched and grateful. So a massive thank you to you all. And in fact, as of filming this video, we are so incredibly close to 1,000 subscribers. 1,000. One with three zeros. That's madness. Right then, let's start off with the topic of non-inclusive wording in the terms and the phrases that we use within the world of technology. Software development and tech contains many instances of non-inclusive phrasing. For example, blacklist and whitelist, slave drive or slave partition, and of course, master branch. These terms were most likely not used because of their oppressive metaphors, but in today's world, these terms should have no place in software development and technology. And we shouldn't try and normalize these things. Recently, I guess in the past year or so, there has been a revolution, and people are making the decision to remove these terms from their technological lexicons and their tech stacks. I'm not necessarily saying that this is the right thing to do or that everyone must do it. I'm simply pointing out that these terms are particularly non-inclusive. And given the choice, why would we not change this and remove the potential of someone feeling pain in their world because of words? This video is gonna address a very, very thin slice of that in regards to just Git and the naming of the default branch. And that is the branch that is automatically generated for you by Git, by the software, when you create a new repository. And that default branch is called master. Again, people will likely say that this is derived from the master copy metaphor. It might well be. I'm not here to argue about that. I'm here just to simply show you an alternative and how to actually implement it. As I said, in the past year or so, people have been changing or removing the name master branch and replacing it with main branch. And if anything that I've just said has inspired you to also make this change, then this video will show you how you can actually do it in Git. And of course, if you don't know what Git is, or if you want to learn more about it, or if you want to learn how to really properly, deeply use it, then I have a video series on my channel with exactly that. Links in the description down below, or you can click this thing. Right, I'm gonna show you how you can modify Git behavior so that when you initialize or create a new Git branch, you can tell it to use this other name, this main branch name, as opposed to the default. Since version 2.28, Git has allowed you to manipulate this default branch name. Of course, if you need to run on a version of Git that is lower than 2.28, this won't work for you. And you'll have to use the old school way of creating the repository, making a new branch, and deleting the original master branch. So let's jump over to the terminal. First of all, if you wanna check your git version, it's as simple as typing git space dash dash version, so the version flag, and you can see which version of git you're running. Here you can see that I'm running exactly version 2.28. Just for completeness, let me show you that I'm in an empty folder now, and I'm gonna use the old way of initializing a git repository, which is just git init. Okay, and you can see in my PS1, in my prompt, I have the branch name and it's still created master. Nothing's changed by default, okay? So the original git init way still works and still creates the default of master. Let me just remove now the git folder, so to delete that git repository to destroy it, and we're back to an empty folder. 
Now, instead, if I wanted to create a, a repository, initialize a repository, and start with the branch name main, I can use the git init command, but pass it a specific argument. And that argument is the initial branch flag. So I would do git init space dash dash initial dash branch equals, and then give it a name. I can give it anything at this point. I can give it hat or a cat or something like that. Or I could give it the branch name that we want, which is main. If I hit enter, you can see it's initialized to git repository for me again, but this time, instead of having the master um, name, it now has the main name. So that's great and all, but I don't wanna have to add that initial branch flag, that initial branch argument every time I initialize a repository, and most of the time I'll probably likely even forget. I want it to be built in to the git init command somehow. Well, fear not, because now I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that you can do exactly that. So the first way is by setting up a git alias. A git alias is very much like a bash alias. It's a shorthand version for a collection or a, a very specified set of commands that you can do. So for example, you could have like git c and that would perform the git commit uh, command, for example. And to tell your system that you want to set up a new git alias, we're gonna use the git config command to say, hey, in my Git configuration, I would like to have this alias that exists. And here's how we do it. Git config dash dash global. So the dash dash global says that this configuration change will be applied globally everywhere on your machine for your user. There are different levels of Git configuration. There's local and also system, and they affect different areas, but we'll cover that in another video. Next, we're gonna say that we want to make an alias and then we're gonna hit dot, and we're gonna give that alias a name. So we're gonna call it new. So whenever we do git new, git space new, it will perform the alias. If we change this to alias.hat, when we did git space hat, it will perform this alias. So we want to do new. Now, very importantly, let me just say that you can't put here git init and sort of overwrite the um, original init functionality. That's a little bit of a uh, disadvantage to using this method. I'll show you another method in just a second that is maybe better than this. And finally, we wanna pass it the command that we want to trigger when this alias happens. We're gonna say, hey, I wanna use the init command. And of course, we're gonna add in that in initial dash branch equals main part as well. So when you've got your git config command that looks like that, setting up the alias called new, you can hit enter and it's now been added to your git config. So now again, I have no git repository in this folder. I'm gonna use git space new, which will now go to that alias and trigger the contents of the alias, which is the git init command, but with that flag always in there. So I never need to type it. Instead of git init, I could now type git new, hit enter and you can see that main is there again. An even better way, and in fact, this is the way that I recommend, is by using a slightly different git config command. Instead of setting up an alias to sort of um, go around the problem, we're gonna set a configuration change to git to say, hey git, whenever you initialize a repository, you're gonna use this branch name. And that's different than making an alias. You'll see what I mean now. Again, I'm gonna use the git config command and dash dash global so it affects throughout my entire user space. And then I'm gonna type init.default branch with a capital B. This is like a setting option in Git. There's loads of them, I won't tell them all here in this video, but there are lots of different settings that you can set in Git. And this is me saying, hey, for the init sort of scenario, the default branch should be and always be this thing that I'm about to give it. And I'm gonna type the word main again afterwards. Again, this is just your branch name that you wanna call it. So this is me setting up a git configuration for my user saying, hey, whenever you init, whenever you initialize a repository, use this default branch name instead of master. Hit enter. And again, if I just do now git init without, um, without needing to use the alias git new, if I just do git init, you can see no need for the dash dash initial branch flag. It's already done it for me here. And that's definitely my recommended way of setting this up. Now on the other side, when it comes to existing repositories, repositories that already exist and have code and history in them, this becomes a bit more difficult. You can of course change the master branch uh, by using the git branch dash m command that just changes the name of it. But this might bring some strange side effects to your git repository and your git history. So if you do go ahead with this, I would approach it with extreme caution. And in fact, I would probably only think about making this change to the main branch 
when you're creating new repositories and just leave existing ones alone. Maybe, but in fact, if anybody else has a better way of changing the master branch in a existing repository without causing a lot of mess, please let me know in the comments down below. The final bit to say on this is that actually GitHub helps on this topic and makes it really easy. As of 2020, GitHub has changed the default branch name um, that is generated when you create a new repository on the GitHub interface to be main. Let me show you what I mean. So on GitHub, on the GitHub website, I'm gonna create a new repository for my user. I'm just gonna call it blah and blah, right? If I create the repository now without anything in it, the new main branch name won't take effect here. What we need to do is make sure that we add something to the initial repository so that it has an initial commit in an initial branch and it can set up that branch for us. So if I just add a readme, just tick the readme bit here, you can see now this bit has been added. This will set main as the default branch and that's what we wanna do. So as long as we just add a, a, a dot git ignore or a license or a readme, you'll see that message pop up every single time and the default branch that is generated in this repository will be main as a standard. So it's even easier to do. Okay, onto the other topic, Hacktoberfest. If you don't know what Hacktoberfest is, then actually I did a video on that last year. So if you want to, you can check that out there. But to summarize it, it's essentially a really awesome event organized by GitHub and DigitalOcean to get lots and lots of people contributing to open source code bases on GitHub. If you submit four pull requests within the month of October, you have essentially completed the Hacktoberfest challenge and can win yourself a prized Hacktoberfest shirt. We are now, as of filming this, over halfway through the month of October, so go and get contributing now before October ends. However, this is why I wanted to mention it in this video. The way that Hacktoberfest works has actually changed. I'll put a link in the description down below to this website that basically contains information about the Hacktoberfest update that changes the rules of what is an acceptable PR. I personally think this is a fantastic update. Repos now need to opt in to participate in the whole Hacktoberfest event. PRs have a 14 day review period so that spammy rubbish little tiny PRs can sort of be uh, removed and PRs need to be tagged with the label Hacktoberfest accepted in pull requests and that is done by the repo owner. These changes in my opinion increase the quality of the contributions and the code changes that are happening during this event. And of course, make that Hacktoberfest t-shirt even more prized. So definitely go and get contributing to some open source code bases. On that note, if you're struggling to find a repository that is right for you or that fits your skill sets or that you're interested in, I actually did a video on how you can find repositories that are sort of relevant to you through the GitHub interface. So go check out that video if you need a little help finding the right repos to contribute to. And that, ladies and gentlemen, for this video is it. Just a quick note, myself and another awesome YouTuber that's actually been on this channel before called Art of Software, we did another collaboration video over on his channel. So I'll put a link in the description down below. If you wanna watch us having a little bit of fun playing a uh, blindfold Vim game, it's good, easy fun, and hopefully provides a couple of laughs. If you liked this video, then give that subscribe button a click. And of course, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new videos. Finally, from me, another massive, massive thank you to everybody that is supporting me and supporting this channel. It's absolutely mind-blowing to me that so many people, over 900 people, are interested in this channel and the content on it. And with that said, thank you so much. See you next time. That looked terrible. Look, look at these bags. Look at these bags under these eyes. That's some good coffee. Oh, oh man, that's in mood. I don't know why. It's weird. Stop being weird. Come on. That was one take. That was one take. To the terminal!